Yeah, welcome to the third edition of the Pussy Worship. May the Lord be with you. Thank you, first of all, to all of those people who poked me on Facebook this week. It is a pleasure for all when you poke the pussy. Poke the pussy as often as you can. The pussy enjoys the poking. I was sitting in the rectory this week, thinking, what should I do my sermon on? A young woman walked into my office, and she was wearing these very tight white leggings, which, and a tight shirt, and with the, oh, this wasn't a camel, this wasn't the toe of camel, this was the whole camel, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I, as a theme for this week's sermon, I had lust in my mind. So I thought of Matthew 5, verse 28. But I say unto you, that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery in his heart. Now what that says to me is, you're going to get punished just the same if you lust after a woman as if you actually committed adultery with the same woman. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm going to gain weight by looking at a double whopper with cheese, and it's the same weight I would gain by eating that double whopper with cheese, I'm having a double whopper with cheese, large fries, large coke. Father, you can't possibly equate adultery with a double whopper with cheese. Sister, the Lord speaks to me through parables. It could be a, a, a Big Mac or a Wendy's single with cheese. It doesn't matter. This is a good sermon to start off. Our next parishioner wants to confess to his sins. Let's go over to the God phone. What is troubling you today, my child? Forgive my neighbor, Father, for she has sinned. They just got married, and I wanted to bring over a congratulatory bottle of wine. He was at work. She plied me with alcohol and took advantage of me. Oh, my child, the Bible is very clear on circumstances such as this, and today is your lucky day. There are three verses which will ease your pain. The first one that comes to mind is Genesis 19, verses 33 and 34. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. On the following day, the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also. Then you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve our family through our father. Now, if this man was able to use wine as an excuse for laying down with his daughters, the neighbor should be fine. Father, what? I just interpret the Bible. I didn't write it. So the next thing that comes to mind is when a man takes a new wife, he shall not go out with the army, nor be charged with any duty. He shall be free at home one year, and shall give happiness to his wife whom he has taken. That means he is supposed to stay home for one year and pleasure his wife. He did not fulfill his obligation. He shall be thankful that you stepped in to help him out with his charge. Good, that is a neighborly act. And the last verse that comes to mind, If a man borrows anything from his neighbor, and it is injured or dies while its owner is not with it, he shall make full restitution. Now I ask you, is this woman still alive and still relatively intact? Y yes, Father. No harm, no foul. And sin some more. Father, Deuteronomy 22, verse 22, If a man is found lying with a married woman, then both of them shall die. The man who lay with the woman and the woman. Sister, who has been given the power to interpret the word of the Lord? Do you have that power? Or was that power given to me? Thank you for watching. Stay safe. And may the Lord be with you.